Just like beauty, value is something perceived in the eye of the beholder. Kind of like perception is reality. On this episode, you'll learn what to look for to find real value when buying a home, even in a challenging market. Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday, Season 2, Episode 4. My name is Steve Nickerson and I lead One Home Colorado, one of Denver's top real estate teams. Today's episode is on the power of finding value. And it's the final part of a four part series on purchasing power that I've been talking about in the last few episodes. You may have noticed that the market hasn't been kind to buyers lately. There's been extremely low inventory and a strong demand from buyers has home shoppers paying more than they really want to. The key today is finding value in a high priced and fast growing metro Denver real estate market. And it can be done. I'm gonna share what to look for when home shopping. The first is location. I believe that is always the number one driver of value because as markets change, the location is what will be most attractive to future buyers and will increase your value. Or at least it will hold value in the event that the market changes. Metro Denver, some of the biggest drivers of a location's value are when it's set on open space or the home's on a cul-de-sac location. Also, mountain views or city views are huge factors as well. You can count on location being the one thing that you can't change and it will help hold or build up your home's value as I mentioned. Next point is what I call the big three. Another way to find value is when one or more of the big three are already updated. The big three include the kitchen, the flooring throughout the home, and bathroom updates. If these items are updated, that is money you won't have to spend going into the home and you can immediately enjoy these things. That's real value because you're saving money on future expenses and having the enjoyment now. And you're not having to waste time or be hassled with renovations later. These, there are other factors to consider in addition to the big three, and they include the age of the furnace, air conditioning, the roof, and windows. When you find a home that has these types of updates, consider it a major win on getting value walking in the door as the new owner. The next point is the intangibles of the home. These are the things that you can't really change, but they're big wants for the typical home buyer. These include the floor plan. Is the floor plan open and flowing like people want today, or is it more closed off? How many bedrooms does it have? What are the sizes? I find that the more bedrooms and the bigger they are, the better. What's the size and the finish of the lower level? In our area, we have a lot of basements that are only half the size, and having that basement finished makes a huge difference. A finished basement is a major driver of value for a home. I'd also throw in the garage. Is it a standard two car or is it a three car? Is it oversized? A three car is going to be another nice driver of long-term value. If the home you buy has these intangibles, then think of it as another win for you, as it will only help you in the future build your home's value. My bonus point today is create value. This is the one a lot of buyers miss because they want everything turnkey and ready when they move in. However, finding a home that seems lacking in updates could be a good thing especially if it's what I call the jewelry of the home. The jewelry of the home are the light fixtures, the plumbing fixtures, the door hardware, the paint, things like that. They're not expensive, but they drastically change the impression your home makes. The immediate value that these create, they'll make you a savvy homeowner and equity builder. I've seen it time and time again. And if you happen to be a home seller watching this video, this is my number one tip to maximize your price when selling. These fixes are what I call spend a dollar, make five. And here's the thing, at the end of the day, I believe you don't have to settle for an overvalued house if you're patient and know what to look for. The best part of real estate here in Denver is that while we have a limited number of homes in the market today, there are still properties that hit the market every single day and you will have choices. Just know what to look for and be ready to write that offer when you find it. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'll be back next week with a special post-election edition of Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm gonna talk about what you can expect going forward for the rest of the year in Denver real estate. Thanks for watching.